don't want to lose you again. Hey, I'm a tough gum. Nothing never happening to me. Never. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 LGBTQ plus animated characters. Also, I'm married, but if I wasn't, who am I kidding? You're out of my league. It would never work. For this list, we'll be looking at the best LGBTQ plus characters on television cartoons. Did we leave out any of your queer heroes? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Matthew McDowell, Big Mouth. This character has been an entertaining presence from the get-go, but he gains even more prominence as of season three. Although we were previously aware of his sexuality, Matthew finally enjoys a substantial romantic plotline in the show's third installment. While falling for Aiden, voiced by Zachary Quinto, Matthew also interacts more and more with Maury the Hormone Monster. Oh, is Chloe your girl? Friend? That's what I tell my dad. Holy shit, uh, I think we've got one. Are you sure? I don't know. Uh, keep him on the line. If that weren't enough, by season five, Matthew has yet another love interest in the form of Jay Bilzerian, whom he had originally smooched during a sleepover game. <clears throat> For giving a central gay character relationships that capture the nervousness and awkwardness of adolescence, this show deserves props. I like, like, like you. Number 19, Ray Gillette, Archer. They all think I'm married to, like, a woman, so... Oh, all right, I'll be your beard. This character isn't exactly a morally upright person, but he's an important example of LGBTQ plus representation nonetheless. Ray is a field operative and bomb specialist who is often bothered by the narcissistic protagonist Sterling Archer. Okay, Ray, interface. I'm sorry? With the controls. Beep, boop, boop, boop. Come on, cyborg, R2-D2 it. Much of Ray's plotline on later seasons of the show follows his dubious paralysis. Oddly enough, the character goes through numerous bouts of the condition, sometimes faked and sometimes real. You lying little- I never said I was paralyzed! Y'all just assumed I was! Because you left the hospital in a wheelchair! They make you! And then I couldn't get a cab, so I just got back in the chair. The introduction of bionic legs that can be switched on and off only further complicates matters. Although we don't see much of a focus on Ray's romantic exploits, his presence and attitude are central to the show's humor. We look totally gay. I am gay. Well, I'm not. Then why are you wearing that turtleneck? Number 18, Velma Dinkley, Scooby-Doo franchise. I gotta tell the gang. That's my girl. Each of the main characters in the TV series, movies, and other works that compose this media franchise is iconic in their own way. For her part, Velma is known for her signature outfits of orange turtleneck and glasses, as well as her unforgettable catchphrase, Jinkies. But this brainy young woman also has the distinction of being a confirmed queer character. One of the producers of the Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated series has made an Instagram post about the character's sexuality. Specifying her lesbian identity, he noted that her relationship with her old science fair rival Marcy had deliberately queer undertones. Doesn't anyone care about mystery solving anymore? I care. You still got me. As well, James Gunn, who penned the 2002 Scooby-Doo film, has revealed that he originally wrote Velma as a lesbian. That's one part of the mystery solved. Number 17, Howard and Harold McBride, The Loud House. While we love to see LGBTQ plus kids and teens on animated shows, it's also refreshing to see gay parents. Hi, fellas, come on in. Hi, Mr. McBride. Hi, Mr. McBride. Ooh, nice structure, Lincoln. Ready to get to work? Y you mean like now? <laughs> of course. This is the case in The Loud House, a Nickelodeon series about a boy named Lincoln living with his expansive immediate family. Lincoln's best friend Clyde has two dads, and although they're only supporting characters, they do get the spotlight now and then. 
In Attention Deficits, Lincoln marvels at the quality of life that the McBrides enjoy at home. In Baby Steps, meanwhile, Clyde is convinced his parents are having another baby, when in fact, they're only adopting a kitten. Do we really have room for another little bundle of joy? Of course we do, Hair Bear. <gasps> I cannot wait to surprise Clyde. Besides being a great representation of gay fathers, Howard and Harold act as the perfect foil to Lincoln's own family. Number 16, Nigel Ratburn, Arthur. Mr. Ratburn is married. I still can't believe it. Yep. It's a brand new world. Although not one of this series' main characters, Mr. Ratburn was always an integral part of Arthur the Aardvark's social life. As an elementary school teacher, he was sometimes strict but always caring towards his students. However, this minor figure on the show attracted major attention in the 2020 episode Mr. Ratburn and the Special Someone. At first, the gang believes he's marrying an overbearing woman he parades around town. She said she was going to toughen Mr. Ratburn up. Can you imagine what a tougher Mr. Ratburn would be like? It turns out that she's his sister, and his real-life spouse-to-be is local chocolatier Patrick. But if Patty's his sister, then who is Mr. Ratburn marrying? It's incredible to see an iconic character finally coming out to audiences, and to see the kids' reaction to the news. Number 15, Los Noceda and Amity Blight, The Owl House. This Disney Channel fantasy series follows Luce, a Dominican-American teen transported to an alternate realm filled with magic and monsters. Despite being a thoroughly non-magical human, Luce attempts to become a witch by learning from a sorceress called Ida Clawthorne. Amity, a student at Hexside School, demonstrates a distaste for the mortal Luce at first. However, they eventually strike up an increasingly close friendship. Their relationship gradually progresses into decidedly romantic territory. The duo were the second ever LGBTQ pairing in an animated Disney show, and their narrative arc has been a true pleasure to watch. Do you want to go out with me? No, <gasps> oh, I was so ready. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you can say it. <sighs> okay. Amity Blight, do you want to go out with me? Yes! <laughs> Number 14, Sheriff Blubs and Deputy Derland, Gravity Falls. For the entire run of Gravity Falls on Disney Channel, fans wondered if Sheriff Blub's close friendship with Deputy Derland was actually supposed to be read as something more. We got bold out there! Good thing I brought my book of spooky ghost stories. I brought rope for friendship bracelets! The two were always a source of comedy in the show for being incredibly incompetent, yet lovable all the same. With you. Every day is a dream. In the show's final episode, they finally declare their love for one another, confirming the popular theory. Creator Alex Hirsch once said that he wanted to include a gay character in the series, but was doubtful that he could on a children's program. But it looks like this small moment in the final episode allowed him to do just that. And if you break the rules, we're gonna zap you. Zap, zap! We're mad with power! And love! Number 13, Tweak Tweak and Craig Tucker, South Park. Though Garrison comes to mind when considering LGBTQ plus characters in this satirical comedy, the character tends to defy characterization. Hello, everybody! Tweak and Craig, on the other hand, experienced a truly silly South Park coming out story. When the Asian girls at school started drawing the two boys in yaoi art, the town decided they were together, and so they were. Though it wasn't initially clear that they had officially come out, the two have since been shown to have developed a sincere relationship. As it turns out, they have given the show some of its sweetest moments in recent memory. You have to stop thinking about it. Tell you what, we're gonna go somewhere fun and make you feel better. 
Number 12. Marshmallow – Bob's Burgers Marshmallow, a transgender sex worker, was initially meant to be a one-time character whom Bob briefly befriends in the first season. Where do I put my cone? Oh, hey, Marshmallow. However, she turned out to be so popular with fans that she became a recurring participant in the misadventures of the Belcher family. So, Marshmallow, how'd you get your name? Because if you show me a sweet potato pie, I am on top of it. I knew it! She's only sparingly used in the series, which makes her random, one-off moments even funnier. The show hasn't told us a lot about the quirky character, but one thing is for certain, if you need your back cracked, Marshmallow is the woman for the job. I can crack anyone's back. Bob, come here. All right, just this one. Whoa. Right there. There Ow. we go. Yeah, Ow. that's it. That's it. I'll lay you down on the floor now. Number 11. EJ and Sue Randall – Clarence In this Cartoon Network series, Clarence's friend Jeff immediately stood out as an anxious foil to the titular carefree protagonist. Midway through the first season, the audience met Jeff's parents, EJ and Sue, both of whom are women. So every year Jeff enters his cooking contest. But every year, he says it's not good enough and throws out the food before entering. <laughs> EJ is the more high-strung mother, resembling her son, while Sue is more relaxed and laid back. And now, he won't even come out of his room. Well, we, we always thought you had such a free spirit and might be able to get Jeff to relax a bit, so... Doesn't matter why we called you in. Can you help or not? The show never feels the need to explain why two women are together or how their relationship is different than a straight one, which goes to great lengths in normalizing gay parents for the young viewers. He was born with a little something extra, an extra toe. Why didn't she just snip it off when he was born? We can't make that decision for him. Maybe he would have wanted to keep it later on. <sighs> Number 10. Todd Chavez Bojack Horseman Todd spent the first few years of Bojack as a lovable and optimistic couch hopper. However, in the third season, he reunites with his ex-girlfriend Emily, with whom he had a strange and non-sexual relationship. Meeting up with her again helps him come to terms with the facts that he is asexual and he continues to explore this new identity throughout the following season. I'm not gay. I mean, I don't think I am, but I don't think I'm straight either. I don't know what I am. I think I might be nothing. He's one of the first canonically asexual characters in television, and his journey is displayed with vulnerability and heart, which contrasts his normally zany personality. Todd, you're great. What a way to end a sentence. But I want a boyfriend who isn't asexual. Whoa, wait, why did you call me that? No, 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 it's not bad. I didn't mean it well, negatively. I was just like you know, stating I'm, it. I'm not, and... that word doesn't necessarily describe. Okay, okay. It gives us just another reason to love and sympathize with the series' sweetest character. And it was satisfying to see him find himself as well as connect with someone as the show progressed. Yeah, I should tell you, I'm actually asexual. Yeah, I know. So am I. That's why I'm asking you out. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, goodbye. Huh. Number nine, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. <gasps> For much of its first season, this adult superhero series focuses not on Harley's romantic feelings towards other women, but rather the fallout from her breakup with the Joker. The show follows Harley attempting to become a supervillain in her own right and take over Gotham, but this proves easier said than done. In the second installment, however, her attraction to her ally Poison Ivy becomes apparent, and the pair even gets into intimate territory shortly before the latter's wedding to Kite Man. Suffice it to say, we were cheering when Ivy admitted to reciprocating Harley's feelings at the end of season two. You don't think I'm chaotic and crazy and make a bunch of messes? No, you definitely do that, but 
You're trying to grow and actually doing it. And that, I mean, for me, that's what matters. I love you, I'm... I love you too, Harles. Number eight, Princess Bubblegum. Adventure Time and Adventure Time Distant Lands. PB is easily one of the most lovable characters in this fantasy series. The whip smarts and highly rational ruler of the Candy Kingdom, she is absolutely devoted to her people. I call her Goliad. Throughout Adventure Time, there were many hints of a complicated past relationship and possibly persisting feelings between Bubblegum and Marceline. Finally, the pair declare their love in an emotional moment in the series finale. In the Distant Lands episode, Obsidian, we see the duo as an actual romantic couple and also get some insight into the original breakup that drove them apart. I'm so glad that I woke up, I don't really care about your stupid candy kingdom. Whether in or out of a relationship with Marcy, Bubblegum is beloved for good reason. Number 7, Takashi Shiro Shirogane, Voltron Legendary Defender. This mecha streaming series centers around Voltron, a giant robot powerful enough to combat the evil Galra Empire. The legendary warrior must be piloted by five paladins, and at the beginning of this series, Shiro is among those who become the next generation of Voltron pilots. In the seventh season episode, A Little Adventure, we learn of Shiro's ill-fated relationship with fellow Galaxy Garrison Cadet Adam. You know how important this is to me. It's worth the risk. Takashi, how important am I to you? Thankfully, despite the heartache he previously endured, our hero gets a happy ending to his romantic storyline. In a flash forward at the end of the series, we see Shiro marrying IGF Atlas crew member Curtis. Number 6, Marceline the Vampire Queen, Adventure Time and Adventure Time Distant Lands. Before the series finale, Marceline's sexual identity was never explicitly addressed within the series itself, though, as mentioned earlier, it was hinted at. Olivia Olsen, the voice of Marceline, as well as a couple behind-the-scenes crew members, subsequently confirmed that she had a relationship with Princess Bubblegum prior to the events of the show. Well, you love getting out your big brain and... And I just thought it'd be cool to spend some quality time with you. Before it was made canon, many fans had suspected this, based on the friendly rivalry that the two share. You used to call them weeds, and you killed them all. But they were growing too tall. What? I can't hear you! In addition to being bisexual, she's also a rocker, a trickster, and a vampire, obviously. She's easily one of the coolest character in all of Ooh, and her personality isn't limited to what's revealed within the series. Uh, I have this weird feeling in my tums. Because you're scared of the Vampire King? No, it's not fear. I know what that feels like. So maybe it's love? Number 5, Luna Loud, The Loud House The third eldest of the 11 children in the Loud family, Luna is an effervescent teenager with an affinity for music. It was in that moment I realized I was Luna Loud! When the family scrambles to figure out who received a love letter, Luna is revealed to have a crush on a girl at her school, implying that she is bisexual. Dear L Loud, Day after day, I hope and I pine. I'm too shy to come forward, but I wish you were mine. She's one of the sweetest and most eccentric kids in the family, identified by her love of all things rock, particularly her idol, Mick Swagger. After briefly touching on her sexuality, the series continued to develop her love life when she and Sam began dating. See you later, Sam. Okay, see ya. Number 
Number 4. Waylon Smithers – The Simpsons Smithers probably spent more time in the closet than any other character in TV history, not officially coming out until the 27th season of The Simpsons. If I came into your house and started sniffing at your crotch and slobbering all over your face, what would you say? Uh. If you did it, sir. Up until that point, it had been heavily hinted, and hinted is a generous way of putting it, that he was in love with his unscrupulous boss, Mr. Burns. Hello, Smithers. You're quite good at turning me on. He tends to act as a punching bag, which suits him well, particularly as a foil to the lazy Homer. Marge's sister Patty was the first recurring character to come out on the show, with the reveal taking place in the 16th season, but she just can't compare to this lovable sad sack. Wow! Save something for your wedding night! Number 3. Adora slash She-Ra She-Ra and the Princesses of Power Hey Adora, how's it hanging? Ketra. Did you really show up late and let us do all the hard parts? This action-adventure series has many LGBTQ characters to choose from, but we'd be remiss to not mention the protagonist, Adora. She grows up as part of the Horde, but after her capture by the Rebellion, her worldview drastically changes. She realizes that much of her upbringing was based on lies and devotes herself to fighting the Horde as her alter ego, She-Ra. For the honor of Grayskull! While LGBTQ plus representation is important in many forms, it's refreshing to see a lesbian character truly take up the spotlight. Don't you get it? I love you! Although we love Adora, the series also wouldn't be what it is without Catra, her enemy turned love interest. Number 2. Garnet slash Ruby and Sapphire – Steven Universe Garnet is one of the most badass characters on television, period. She is the result of a fusion of two gems named Ruby and Sapphire, who fall in love despite their circumstances. Learning this backstory makes Garnet more than just an unshakable warrior, but a complex and vulnerable character. I was back. I was someone and I didn't know who. But I felt like I was getting the hang of my strange new form. And then I fell. Ah! The core of her power is the love between these two characters, who care so much for one another that they spend nearly all their time joined together as one being. She's far from the only LGBTQ character on this particularly inclusive show, with Pearl being another standout, but it's hard to top Garnet's beautiful representation of love. You already are the answer. So, what was it? The answer. Love. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cora – The Legend of Cora It's time for you to begin your airbending training. Yes! Finally! Cora was an instant hit with audiences as the star of the continuation of the universe from Avatar The Last Airbender. She's the next Avatar after Aang, allowing her to bend water, fire, earth and air. Though she can be a hothead, she's strictly loyal and more than a capable bender. Throughout the show, she's shown to be close to Asami, but in the final moments of the series, they share a romantic moment, confirming that they are, at least by the end of the episode, a couple. Let's do it. Let's go on a vacation, just the two of us. Anywhere you want. Really? Okay. I've always wanted to see what the spirit world's like. Sounds perfect.
It's a moment that forces us to recontextualize the series and these characters that we've grown to love. And it's a twist we're totally on board for. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.